Grid Talk. Today we're here to review the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix qualifying. My name is Ruby Price and joining me we have Grid Talk co-host Tom Downey. Hello. And from Hit the Apex, Jawad Yacoub. Good day. Uh, but before we get onto this episode, we must thank our sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online is your number. Uh, no, Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting in your favorite casino and card games. Available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. But traffic, traffic everywhere, not a car to pass. We saw shunt, we saw blocks. Most importantly, we saw Carlos Sainz take pole in an insanely close qualifying session where the finest of margins made all the difference. But where were Red Bull? We'll get to that. Um, but put it this way, they weren't in Q3. Um, firstly, though, we do just have to talk about the traffic. You know, it was decided after a driver briefing to not impose a maximum lap time in qualifying. Um, but, the, you know, we saw in Monza last time out, um, you know, talk about Ferrari not quite making that maximum lap time in qualifying and then it being basically disregarded as soon as the session finished. They decided after a driver briefing to not bring it in. But Jawed, um, firstly, do you think that would have solved the issues today if we had had a maximum lap time that drivers had to, you know, make up on their, you know, leaving the pits to start in a flying lap? I mean, it's all good and well that they had that in place at Monza. You know, you need something because this is just getting ridiculous and whatever they talk about in their driver's briefings, who knows. But it's it's not a look good look for the sport, first of all. It looks pretty amateurish uh, that they're all squabbling over the same real estate. At the end of the day, something has to give. And, you know, I always fear that in an instance like this, there's going to be someone who gets caught napping and someone on a fast lap and particularly, you know, around the corner, the final corner where we saw pretty nasty accident in Q1. What if someone gets caught out there and we have two cars come together, for example? So, you know, you can talk about F1 being all about pushing it to the limit and, you know, getting every single little bit of um you know, advantage you can. This is just stupid, I think. It's nothing to do with, oh, let's get an advantage or let's, you know, get ahead of the other guy. It is absolutely stupid in my mind. So, you know, something needs to be done. I thought Monza was probably one of the worst tracks you would see it during the year. But, yeah, what we saw today in Singapore and now we've got, as a as a result of that, we've got well, how many um investigations that we're awaiting for the stewards to come back at us with and you know as a result we don't have a you know proper grid order yet for the grand prix either or classification after qualifying so i mean we've got the provisional stuff but we want to know where you know everyone's going to be when penalties are applied or if penalties are going to be applied in this instance so yeah you know i'm hoping if they do impose uh, the minimum lap time rule that we did see in Monza for future Grand Prix um, that, you know, the FIA, the stewards can be a bit more strict about it and, you know, really draw the line in the sand with the drivers because it seems like unless they actually get in trouble and are, and are penalised and slapped, um, not slapped on the wrist, but, you know, they play hard ball with it, that nothing's going to change in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you are right to mention there are so many drivers under investigation for alleged blocking. Um, it's probably worth putting one big asterisk over like our current result um, of, of what we're going to go through with this podcast. If there is breaking news, we'll try to adapt to that. But of course, we can only go off what we're uh, working with currently. Tom, with so many drivers, you know, being uh investigated for alleged blocking um you know there's talk about you know making changes to the qualifying format for other reasons but is traffic one potentially one of the reasons as to why we maybe need to look into um a different qualifying format you know we do 
we've we've seen 20 cars on track at the same time in this uh qualifying session today and that led to traffic do we need to maybe see you know a scenario where there's 60 minutes to just set one qualifying lap and you can only have one car out at a time and it's just get to the track first something like that i don't think so no because f1 has tried and tested and ultimately failed with quite a few different qualifying sets of, uh i say sets of, you know, quite a few different qualifying um formats over the years you know the the less said about the ill-fated 2016 um round robin elim what on earth why is said wearing jeans um type knockout the better you know that was um that yeah you know we've 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 looked at different sort of like quality options before and ultimately you know qualifying is one of the things in f1 at the moment which doesn't need to be changed in my opinion in terms of the format anyway when we start looking at that how the format is run or how the session is run i think that's where we need to start having some different conversations because that many cars backed up at you know at, at you know, at, at the back of the circuit. And we've seen it, like Jared said, we've seen it in Monza. We saw it in Austria. You know, we've seen it in all sorts of places where a car will be on a flying lap. And because someone else is trying to get a, get a hot lap in quicker, um, you, you know, you've, you've then got, you know, sort of like three, four. In, you know, in today we had, what, six cars, um, I think, you know, sort of all blocking in, in the final sector. Um, you know, I've I, I got to be honest, I generally couldn't count how many cars it was. And... It's you know it it does make you think like you know what can these are all professional drivers and they are drivers who are at the top of their game apart from Lance Stroll who's absolute useless um, but Jawa's got him in the show so lucky him um, uh, I just had to get my piece in um, you know they're they're all professional drivers you know and they're, they're all you know up, uh, they're all in in the sort of like upper echelons of most sports so they should be good you know they should be. They should be able to get through a field without sort of like causing incident. And they should, and also drivers who are on a cool lap, they should have their engineers in their ear saying, right, you you know, you've got X Y Z who is 5.6, 4.5, 3.4, whatever behind you know, on on a hot lap, stay off the racing line. You know, yes, the cars have mirrors. It's not you know they're not great. Their engineers or you know their team representatives can certainly help to say you know you've got people on a hot lap, but. They just need to be more disciplined. That's it. And I think imposing perhaps a sort of you know a, a minimum sort of like lap time to stop people driving unnecessarily slowly, I think that could be one way of going. But who knows? I think it's a maximum lap time that's going to stop them from being slowly, as opposed to a minimum lap time that would yeah, that probably would, encourage that the would, slowness. That was sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Um. But you know, like, yeah, some very good suggestions there. Like, ultimately. There just needs to be so much more awareness. And I don't know about um, the listeners, but I was getting rather frustrated with just so many, you know, oh, we'll investigate after the session whilst there are no cars on track. You know, there's literally nobody making anything new going on during the session. Just take five seconds to look at two onboards, you know, who's going slowly. You don't need to speak to them all of the time. Um but yeah, we we will get to um, potential penalties when you know we get to them. But you know, now let's actually take a look at the current provisional grid for tomorrow. As we said, you know, there may or may not be some swap around. But one driver who, if he even makes it into um, you know the race tomorrow with the shunt that he had in Q1, Lance Stroll starting P20 for Aston Martin, his teammate uh, Fernando Alonso in P7. Um, firstly, Jawad, um, talk me through Stroll's incident and, you know, was there anything really that could have been done to avoid it? Um, without sounding horrible, perhaps, you know, driving the car a bit better. Like, yeah, there's... He, in the lead up into it, we had the onboard um, live with him going through the final sector and he just looked like he wasn't in control at all of that car. And um, I was like, wow, this is really scrappy. And then, yeah, when he lost it um, on the 
outside apex going into the final corner, uh, you know, common mistake that I do in the video game all the time. Um, and first of all, really happy to see him walk away from it as well. And just heard as well that he's been given the all clear by the medical staff as well. So that's all good. So it's now up to the team, see if they can get that car rebuilt and um, start him tomorrow, possibly from the pit lane and whatnot. But yeah, just, you know, I'm going to reference um, Tom Tom's discussion and talk about it on one of the shows last week and pretty much add to it by saying that I feel the same in the fact that it's it's becoming painful to have to say negative things about Stroll all the time because, you know, we don't wish negative things upon anyone and it's not like we dislike him as a driver or, you know, we're trying to hate on him. But after how many years in F1 and this year driving for a team that, as we've seen in the hands of Fernando Alonso, has been capable of finishing on the podium and, you know, potentially battling for third in the Constructors' Championship as well, that more is needed. And when you see this, an incident like this, it's just like, well, you know, there goes a whole lot of points that could have potentially helped us in the championship. And when they do their end of year review, if, if you know, they even do a review into this sort of thing with, with Stroll and Stroll Senior, you know, any other organization would be like, right, well, isn't this a liability now? We've got a really capable reserve driver in Felipe Drogovic on the sidelines who, you know, if we put him in the car, he might do some really good things. He might score podiums and points and stuff like that. But, yeah, you know, again, happy to see him walk away and that he's unharmed, but it's just becoming a, a common sight at the moment where Stroll is just underwhelming and doing silly things and you know Bahrain was a long time ago and you know we can't keep blaming the fact that you know he had that preseason crash and whatnot so you know yeah not nothing more to add on Stroll as far as Alonso is concerned as well a little bit disappointed because Singapore was one of those races where Aston Martin targeted pretty early on as being one of those tracks where they would be able to, you know, potentially challenge for pole position or um, for the race win against Red Bull. But, you know, with the fact that their development has kind of gone downhill through the season and the likes of, you know, Ferrari are proving to be a bit more proficient on on certain tracks and McLaren being up there, Mercedes as well, um, it's kind of, you know, no surprise, but then disappointing that Alonso was only seventh fastest. So we'll see if he can craft together something in the race as he always does. But um, yeah, not not the greatest of days for Aston Martin, I've got to say. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly being P7 when there are two cars that would usually be ahead of you in qualifying being behind you. You know, that should be that that should be Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin's prime territory for capitalizing on something. And they haven't, you know, they are P7 and P20. And, you know, the less said about one of them, the better. But moving on to another team for which saying uh, less tends to be more. Alfa Romeo currently um, starting P17 with uh, Guan Yu Zhou, P16 with Valtteri Bottas. Apparently they brought up grades. It didn't seem to do anything, but ultimately, you know, Q1 was curtailed. We wouldn't have known, really, if they were going to improve. Tom, anything you want to say on the Alfa Romeos? Um, Is the silence for dramatic effect or... Um... I just... I, I I have nothing to say. So here we go. Um, I mean, just... They're just treading water. They're they're so uninspiring. You know they've they've they qualified what P looking at Bottas P sixteen and Joe P nineteen, and they've signed up the same drivers for, for for next year. It's like you know, do, honestly, if they were a meal deal, they'd be plain ham, bottle of water, and ready salted crisps. They're that boring, and it's just you know, it's just like you know, I, it's just I don't know what to what what to say or you know. 
you know, because yeah, we've got Audi coming in in a couple of years, and you know, there's sort of slowly sort of feeding that in. You know, next season is make or break for Joe, I'd say, because he'll be three seasons in, and then by that point he'll be sink or swim. Um, you know, on a circuit where you know the sort of like the sort of you know like peaky higher downforce type setup, like when they did quite well in Hungary, they've done awful here. So I don't, you know, I, I don't. There's, there's the thing. They're just boring, man, and they'll probably like become trundle, they'll probably trundle around at the back, and they might pick up a point if there's some shenanigans in front of them. I doubt it, but they're just, uh, yeah, you know, you know, they're, they're just, just give us something, you know, just give us a glimmer of hope, like you did in Hungary, you, you know. They're just, you know, how can they be so like just anonymous and? Yeah, you know, their performances are so lackluster. They need to do better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you think about the history that the Sauber team has, and, you know, they're a team that have challenged for podiums, they're a team that, you know, have fought tooth and nail for, like, existence. And, you know, whilst having the security that, a, you know, a brand like Alfa Romeo has, um, they've obviously got Audi coming through, like, show some of that that's all we're asking for um but yeah out in q1 and of course with the stroll crash we don't know if they would have actually made it through into q2 um but the team maybe one driver very much unlucky to be out in q1 um one driver lucky to be you know, not out in Q1, certainly, um, Jawad. Williams, we've got Logan Sargent starting P18, Alex Albon starting P14. When we cut to Albon's on board during that Q1 lap, it didn't look like a good lap. And granted, it put him three tenths off, but there was so much track evolution going on. I don't think he would have actually made it through to Q2 if there hadn't have been that interruption. Yeah, so it was a bit of a tale of, um, you know, two mixed fortunes for both the Williams drivers and perhaps a little uh, return back to earth as well after a couple of good races in recent times. But um, Sargent, I think he's another driver that's being looked at by the stewards for impeding on Lance Stroll at turn eight during Q1. So interesting to see what um, that will bring, uh, that'll come back with. But yeah, Albin definitely looking um, or the car looking out of sorts. I mean, it's a shame because the liveries on them are quite gorgeous. You put golf colours on anything, it'll make them look um, quite gorgeous in, in motorsport. But, yeah, you know, from, from 14th, it's it's going to be tricky for Alex to really do anything unless there is a race of attrition, which, you know, we do see often in Singapore. Um, and, yeah, you know, I guess lucky in many ways that, you know, while his teammate, um, got caught out by the red flag because of the stroll crash uh, that, you know, it almost saved him from someone like a Sonoda jumping ahead or Piastri even because, yeah, Piastri was definitely someone who was caught out by that, which uh, we'll get to a bit later. I mean, we'll get to Piastri right now, in fact. Um, another driver who was caught out by Stroll's incident, uh, Tom Downey, like, obviously, we can't really talk too much about the qualifying session for Oscar Piastri. Um, you know, unfortunate placement on track and unfortunate driving, uh, well, unfortunate driver within one of the teams. Um, but what can Piastri do tomorrow? That McLaren has looked pretty switched on uh, this weekend in Singapore. Um, you know, is is there any hope for Piastri? Can he get a points position perhaps tomorrow? I think a points position is going to be quite the ass given the nature of the circuit. However, you know, Singapore perhaps not quite as difficult to overtake as as, as we give it credit for. I'm not saying it's easy by any chance, by the way. Um, I don't know why I said it like that either. Um, it, you know, it's, especially with that last sector, you know, in, instead of having the, the sort of like almost zigzags, you know, having that slightly straighter run through to the, through to the double kink of that left-hander at the end. That might make it a bit easier. That might make it a bit, um, 
you know, that, that might provide some more options for, for overtaking, you know, because the specific guy then slips streams and goes on the corner. Could see, a, you know, a bit, bit of a bit of move into turn one and then perhaps, perhaps, perhaps some switchbacks and all the rest of it. Who knows? Um, that McLaren has got pace and, and um, I was going to say Norris, um, I was, I was going to say Lando, Piastri, third time lucky, um, will have, um, you know, he, you know, especially, you know, in the first couple of laps, you know, he'll have, he'll have DRS, at the lap three, obviously, you know, so that, that nice long run down Raffles Boulevard, you know, where Max had a fat set, fat set of elevens is last year, you know, um, he can, he can potentially, you know, get, get a, get a good move down there, start picking off some slow moving cars, I think we'll probably expect to see some other cars falling backwards, you know, people like Haas, which we'll get to later on. Um, so, you know, I think he'll move up the order that way naturally. Uh, he'll probably dispatch of, um, you know, you know uh, Bottas in front of him, maybe even off the line. I think points might be a bit of a stretch because it's, it's, it's a long, hot race. Um, so, you know, I think he'll be, it'll probably be more focused on keeping the car in one piece. But I think a P10, given the pace of that McLaren, maybe, maybe. Quite possibly, maybe. Who knows? The race is tomorrow. Um, but a team that um, have very much been a who knows kind of scenario recently, Jawad, Alpha Tauri. Um, so now just starting P15, having not set a lap time in Q2. Um, the first lap time being, you know, allegedly blocked by Max Verstappen. The second lap time being because he locked up. Um, but Lawson um, knocking out Max Verstappen, putting himself into um, Q3 by just going into P10. He's ultimately qualified P10 ahead of Verstappen. Um, like, obviously, we, we've been praising Lawson's attitude, the way he's come into Formula One, like having been a replacement driver for a replacement driver. Um, but it was certainly an impressive display today. Yeah, very much so. Impressive display. And, you know, just hearing what Tom was saying earlier about this being such a grueling race and, you know, a real endurance test, especially for a rookie, because, you know, the junior formula don't race at, at, at a track like Singapore. So it is, you know, he along with the like Sergeant Piastri, this is their first time here. And, you know, being in a position as he is in 10th, you know, there could be potential for points and, you know, not saying that it'll it'll happen yet, don't want to put the curse on him, but imagine if he did score points, you know, in a car as bad as that Alpha Tauri has been this season at a track and as a, a race is as difficult as Singapore, you know, what's that going to do for Red Bull hierarchy and um, the decisions that, you know, they're going to make? Of course, there's going to be a lot of questions asked about, you know, uh, previous decisions that they've made, you know, we can criticize them and, you know, just dump on them as much as we can. You know, I, I personally love dumping on, on Red Bull and decisions they've made. So, you know, we can hear all about that another time, but yeah, Lawson, just incredible performances. And he's only had a couple of, <laughs> only had a couple of races so far to be able to show what he can do. And, um, yeah, you know, this is probably his biggest test yet, and um, we'll see how we go. Sonoda, unfortunately, um, didn't end up setting a lap time in, lap time in Q2, I believe. So, um, yeah, really had a messy Q1, and I guess, yeah, you know, he just has to sort of do what he can from 15th and hope that he doesn't end up being a casualty as there um, inevitably will be. Oh, well, he had an issue in Q2, so there you go. So, yeah, hopefully he doesn't end up being a casualty in the race as there usually is expected in Singapore. Yeah, quite a lot of casualties in Singapore, usually a race of attrition. Um, who knows? We could even see only 10 finishes tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Obviously, um, chance to maybe talk about what's been going on in the Red Bull Driver Academy in our post show, which we'll be doing after we've finished this uh, 
part of the podcast. But first, um, if you are one of the 72% of people who aren't yet subscribed to the our YouTube channel, uh, please consider helping us out with a like and a subscribe. And if you've got five minutes, even whilst you're listening to this episode, why not take it over? Why not head over to um, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five star review? That'd be really helpful. Um, but yeah, so we go from Alpha Towery, Tom, and now we talk about their. The team that has been almost flawless this season, the race where the race weekend where they can actually wrap up the constructors' title, and they just look like they've had absolute. They look at some points like the worst car on the grid. Usually, that spot is reserved for their sister team or Haas, not Red Bull. You know, Tom, um, Max Verstappen obviously involved in three counts of alleged blocking. Um, Sergio Perez uh, binning it in on his running Q2. Um, they're currently set to start P13 and P11, uh, Perez being the behind one as usual. Um, tell me about Red Bull's qualifying session today. Have they ha- got any chance tomorrow? Of course they do, but have they got any chance tomorrow? Um, I mean, honestly, uh, I seriously think this is the first race where we're not going to have a Red Bull winner. Because if it was a circuit like Monza or Silverstone or wherever, and we've seen especially what Max can do when he picks his way through the field. You know, we saw it in Miami, for example. You know, he qualified, I think, something like P7 or whatever, and he picked his way through the field. We saw it in Belgium this year, last year. You know, we've seen it, sorry, in Hungary last year. So we know how good he is at doing that. I really don't know for Singapore because... Almost like contradictory to what I just said about Piastri, you know, where it's like, oh, it's not that difficult to overtake. I'm not saying it's easy, but you know, and, and I'm not saying it's impossible because some people seem to think that it is, you know, it is absolutely impossible to get past it. It's not, you know, if Massa can do it sideways, you know, going going down into that hairpin, you know, then you know, then you must be able to do some form of overtake, you know, and he didn't even have to sue for that one, um, you know, and um, you know, it's just, you know. Max especially is going to have the bit between his teeth tomorrow because he was obviously seriously miffed today and you can understand why you know, you know because because he you know, he he was out in traffic I'm just refreshing the FIA website nothing yet but Max has been summoned for three separate um uh instances of alleged impeding. blocking incidents <laughs> so yes yes yeah, so it's alleged impeding I mean if you ask me the the one that We'll cover off the one that says between 2017 and 18. That's the one at the end where we had about six or seven cars. And, and it, it's uh, the thing on TV said um, that it, uh, it, is, it said it was that like, a, a number of drivers are going to be investigated. As for um, the one on Yuki, that's a slam dunk, if you ask me. And as for the one on uh, at the pit the exit, pit lane. yeah, I mean. If if uh, if Red Bull ever fold, JP can go straight into law because the way he because the the way he just shut Max up that was like a solicitor's answer. That was that was absolutely brilliant. So um yeah you know because Max is about to completely put himself in it. Um so yeah so I think both of those two will be a penalty and it's what three place good penalty for if it's a five place good penalty he's that's two instances he's died last and. It's like you know, of of all of the, of the only sake I could think of that would be worse um, for starting last than here is Monaco. So, you know, he's you know he he set the record for for ten in a row. Yes, brilliant. Um, but that is almost like I'm saying this as a Red Bull fan. That's almost irrelevant coming into this weekend. You, you know, it's um, if Red Bull want to do the clean sweep, they've got to pray for a blinking miracle tomorrow, because as it stands. I think we're either going to see Ferrari or Mercedes on that top step. I don't. I honestly, and this is a bit of a spoiler for my predictions. I don't think we're going to see a Red Bull on the podium at all tomorrow, which I never thought I would say this season. Let's you, you know, you, you know, you know, Perez, fair enough, but Max, I never thought I'd say that. And it's mad to think that Max's lowest finishing position this year is P two, and that's only been twice. So this could be the turning point for for, for the season, and this could be the spice. The Nando's extra hot sauce that this season needs because it's been completely plain so far. So come on, I'm all for it. 
other brands of hot sauce are available um but yes i mean apparently they have just left the stewards so if we do get some form of breaking news obviously we can address that but ultimately yeah like if if any race is going to not have a red bull winner this season this is the one that's currently lining up for it and what it would also do is you know end their and Red Bull's, um, you know, record beating, um, you know, consecutive races in a row um, in terms of wins um, and, you know, ending that historic chain, like that's something that they definitely don't want to happen. You know, Red Bull, of course, previously had, you know, the uh, records for this as well. But yeah, um, I guess that kind of just makes them joint record winners um, in their own right anyway. But yeah, so we'll move on to Alpine, and we've got Pierre Gasly P12, we've got Esteban Ocon P8, brushing the wall in Q1, Joward. The screen said it was only one centimetre. It looked a bit closer than that. Um, but ultimately, you know, like that's the kind of attitude you've kind of got to take in Singapore. You've got to be up to the limit. You've got to be as close to the walls as you can get without brushing them just to get that extra speed. And of course, we're hearing all of this about Alpine being, you know, the slowest engine, you know, tell me about Alpine's qualifying. What can they do from where they are tomorrow? Well, first of all, it was a better qualifying than they had last time they had in Italy, where they both ended up eliminated in Q1. Uh, Gasly in a Red Bull sandwich for the moment. We um, hopefully, you know, we'll hear soon if, That'll change. And, yeah, Ocon, you know, really shaving the wall, brushing the wall, whatever you want to say, really extracting um, every little bit of uh, real estate he could. And, you know, as a result, I think eighth is quite impressive to see that Alpine up there. And Singapore, unlike your other street tracks, is, you know, a bit more of a power circuit because of the straights and having that extra straight there this year as well in the final sector. So, you know, it could be easy for their power defici- deficiencies deficiencies to show up. Um, but, you know, they seem to have done okay. And as far as the race is concerned, you know, they seem to have a better race car, I felt, the Alpines this season. So there might be a bit of uh, comfort for them on Sunday as long as they stay out of trouble. Yeah, definitely. Staying out of trouble, staying out of each other's way. You know, the two things that Alpine really need to make sure that they do tomorrow. And who knows, they might be able to um, capitalize on that and actually get some points back on that board. Um, But Tom, we're going to look at Haas, who have had a very good qualifying, really, when you, you know, consider that it seems like they dropped off a lot in the recent weeks. Um, Hulkenberg currently P9. Kevin Magnussen P6. Um, they're bringing upgrades in a few uh, race time, apparently, but um, Magnussen still with a chance at the qualifying head-to-head because this would have been the race weekend for Hulkenberg to seal that. Um, you know, we're used to seeing Haas drop, Haas drop back in the race, so we're obviously ex- expecting that to happen tomorrow as well. But, you know, it's certainly a good showing today from the two, um, you know, Ferrari-powered cars. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think they did benefit a little bit with the with um, Stroll's um, misfortune in Q1. That's as nice as I'm ever going to say that about him. Um, you know, because obviously that red flag did sort of curtail any further running. But, you know, they did still get out of Q2 you know, on merit. You know, they they timed their runs well because track evolution was insane today. You know, it was, what, half a second or six tenths or something, which is absolutely mad for, for track evolution. Um, so, yeah, you know, they, they, they timed their runs well. They got good laps in. The Haas is generally all right in quality pace, but in race pace, that's where they just seem to go absolutely backwards. And like I, like I alluded to earlier, I think they will go backwards tomorrow. Uh, as the K-Mag sort of, you know, sort of, yes, he's still in the head-to-head scrap with his teammate. Yeah, he is on paper, but that's like in the same way that Sergio Perez is in the title fight on paper. You know, Hulk has definitely got the measure of K-Mag when it comes to qualifying performances, as we've seen. Um, and, you know, Hulk has come back in after a year off into an unfamiliar car, you know, full-time, and, to be honest, made Luke Magnussen look quite averaged, 
let's be fair. Um, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but I, I do think that's I do think that's what it's like. You know, you know, Hulk has come in. I was very skeptical of him coming in, but he's done an absolute bang up job in that car since since he's come uh, back into Formula One full time. And I think he's making um, I, you know, I, I, th- I think he's making K Mac look quite ordinary. So Hulk's going to win that head to head, I would say, barring some divine intervention. Um, as as to the chances in the race, well, I mean. You know, again, you know the the kind of circuit it is. You know, they might be able to hold on, but there's like there's enough of a DRS straight. Certainly, you know that main one down Ruffles Boulevard. I think it's Ruffles Boulevard. I keep calling it that. I'm fairly certain it is. Um, you know, the, 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 there's enough of a run down there that you can actually overtake even with that uh, right hand kink in in the middle. So that house just absolutely destroys its tires. So I think those tires are going to fall off quite quickly. Um, it depends what they start on. I'd imagine they'll start on mediums. If they start on softs, they'll get absolutely chewed up and spat out by about lap six, I'd imagine. Um, so they could be in for a long afternoon tomorrow, especially in the heat and humidity of Singapore. You know, I think their car's going to struggle. The other thing we've got to think about is, you know, especially the Ferrari and the Alpine-powered cars. So the Ferrari-powered cars and Alpine is in that kind of heat and humidity um, are they going to overheat and go bang? Because we've seen that quite a few times. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see you know, maybe Haas or someone go kaput at some point where the car just, just exits stage left. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of whether it is Raffles Boulevard or not, I honestly have no idea. Um, at this point, F1 circuits are all just a bunch of numbers um, with a few exceptions. Um, but ultimately, yeah, um, Haas, a good day today. Um, and questions over their performance tomorrow, as has kind of been their season. Um, but a team that, you know, have generally been better in race trim than qualifying, but could have potentially been on pole today, Joward. Uh, Mercedes with Hamilton in P5 and George Russell P2. So close in the end for George Russell, but um, has seemingly just had the measure over his teammate all weekend. Um you know, and Russell ultimately being five tenths off his teammate. No, Hamilton being well. I mean, kind of. Yeah, they're both they're both five tenths separated by five tenths, just with Russell ahead. Um, but could it have been Paul today? Um, and you know, what can they do tomorrow? Yeah, first of all, with uh, George, impressive time at the end there to be what zero point zero seven two off the pole, um, and. You know, when we were heading into those final stages, it looked in my eyes as a battle between the McLarens and the McLaren and the Ferraris. But um, Russell had to put the Mercedes in there. So, you know, just again, one of those sensational qualifying conclusions. It's It's been great the last few races, as I said on a previous show as well. Um, but yeah, you know, having the measure over his teammate as well in, in Lewis Hamilton, it's been interesting following that over the last few Grand Prix as well. There was a bit of a question mark over Russell coming out of the mid-season break about whether you know, this year he's kind of just uh, fallen behind his teammate a little bit, but he's also, you know, not had the best of luck when it comes to reliability either. So, you know, for him, this would be a big confidence boost. And I think, you know, just both Mercedes in general, when it comes to their race pace, like you alluded to, Rubes, is that, um, you know, they're going to look better than the likes of the Ferrari, sadly, uh, if you're a Ferrari fan. And uh, they do seem to work with their tyres a bit better as well. And I think even in in the post-qualifying uh, interview with Carlos Sainz, he was saying that, yeah, Mercedes' strategy is always a bit different to what um, they do over at Ferrari. So it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. But I think very much so both drivers could count themselves, you know, Russell definitely, but even Hamilton from fifth can count himself into contention for a podium. I mean, simply a good launch could put George Russell at the front and then from from then on, it's just manage the tyres to, you know, the end. And yeah, I mean, with Red Bull out of the picture, there are so many cars that would be lining up to take the win tomorrow um you know as long as all things go smoothly um but yeah uh tom another driver who will be wanting to make his name 
you know, put his name on the top step tomorrow. Lando Norris, P4, so close in the end, um, but coming down to two and a half tenths off pole. Um, but at one point, it looked like Lando Norris might have just snuck that special liveried McLaren, you know, on the front row ahead of um, Leclerc, ahead of George Russell, maybe even ahead of Sainz. But, you know, can he do something special tomorrow? Can he win it? Oh, man, I'd love it if Lando could win it. Wouldn't we all? But as for can Lando win it, oh, it'll be a tough ask. Um, You know, I'm a... Yeah. That McLaren, it's a really good race car. Um, as for can oh, can Lando win it? Oh man, it's one of it's one of those. But this is the thing, right? This is what we've been saying about this twenty twenty three season. With Red Bull out of the picture, it is so close. You know, if you, if you look at how close, you know, just you know the top two were, and the, you know the top three. You know how close Ferrari, uh, Ferrari, McLaren, and Mercedes are, and you know, Aston were in there before they fell off a cliff thanks to Stroll. Um, it's you know it, it's uh, it, it's. It's, it's so hard to say, you know, I, I, I honestly think this is going to be the first race this year where we don't have a Red Bull win. Um, and even, half of me is like, you know, I want to see them winning because I want to see them do the clean sweep just because of what it'll mean for history. But the other half of me is like, uh, you know, I, I want to see someone else win. I think Lando could win it. I think he would need things to go his way. Let's just hope it doesn't rain in the closing laps as well. You know, a little throwback to Russia 2021. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just... I think the Merc will be a better race car. Um, and the the Ferrari, I think, has better outright pace, but is a bit worse on its tyres. So it's really hard to say. Um, I'm going to say he could win it. I'm not going to say I think he will. But I... Uh, each, I reckon you could get a podium tomorrow. I really do. Staying on the fence there in terms of whether the win's possible, just so that you can't get it wrong. Just so you can't get it wrong. Um, exactly. Yeah, but Joe, a team that have often been on the fence in terms of their strategies this season, uh, let's talk about Ferrari. So they've got Leclerc in P3, who said it wasn't good enough today, despite only being seven hundredths off his teammate, who did get pole. Um and that has kind of been the story of when Carlos Sainz has got pole. It's always been just quite close, like um, between him and Leclerc, just ultimately Carlos Sainz just edging it by a couple of hundredths. Um, but I think it's fair to say that Carlos Sainz has been the driver that, you know, has looked as though he would be the one to put it on pole out of the two. But can he win tomorrow? What can what can Ferrari throw at Carlos Sainz tomorrow to stop him from winning? <laughs> Uh, you know, their usual strategy antics probably and tyre wear, all, all the things that have kind of made Ferrari the maligned um, outfit that they've been over the last couple of years. No, I honestly, um, I, earlier in the year, I, and I'm happy to admit that I said multiple times that I feel like Ferrari are so far away from winning a race this season that, you know, I'm... Um, Going back on that and saying, wow, you know, they're actually in a position, not like Monza, where, you know, Verstappen was inevitable that, you know, in this situation, they have a genuine opportunity to win. It's just now up to them not to sort of mess it up as they have done. And signs for him to, you know, put his name out there as being kind of the lead driver uh, in this situation as well. I mean, Leclerc said, I think there was a glimpse of a, or just a little snippet of a radio message after his final flying lap. And it was something to, you know, something similar to the, I am stupid message that's famous f from him in, in the past race. I can't remember which one, um, but yeah, you know, that just shows you how close they are, but what signs is getting out of the car. There you go, Baku 2019. How could I have forgotten? Um, signs is just getting more out of the car. And it's a shame that, you know, it's not a car that's in the championship contention because 
that's where I'd love to see both these drivers really up there. But, you know, while they're fighting over minor points placings in the top five or whatever, um, is Sainz going to really get the credit that he deserves this season? Who knows? I mean, he's driving like a driver who's, you know, pretty confident of where his future lies, whether it's with Ferrari or with Audi, as has been rumoured in, in 2026 and whatnot. But he's doing an exceptional job at the moment. And, you know, if there is a Ferrari driver that deserves to win the Grand Prix tomorrow, then it has to be Carlos Sainz. So good on the smooth operator. And, um, you know, hopefully we will hear the Spanish national anthem tomorrow. Anything about the Dutch anthem, I'm sure everyone will be happy with. I mean, I think the odds on the Dutch national anthem playing tomorrow have got to be so fine. Um, maybe we should check with uh, our sponsor. Um, but let's uh, let's move on to some predictions then for tomorrow. Now I'm going to throw my own hat in the ring here. I you know normally when I'm hosting I'll leave it to just uh, my fellow panelists. But um, I'm going to go with a podium prediction tomorrow. I'm going to put George Russell on the top step. I think Mercedes have got the better race car. Um, but I am going to put uh carlos uh no i'm gonna put charles leclerc in p2 because ferrari are going to mess up their strategy and charles leclerc is gonna get past tom let's take it over to you what's your podium prediction for tomorrow please um i'm gonna say signs p1 russell p2 and lando p3 and joward I'll continue backing the smooth operator, so I'll go signs for the win. Uh, Lando P2, so we can have Carl Lando on the podium together, and let's say George Russell P3. Wow. And moving on to podium, no, podiums, bold predictions. I feel so tired. Uh, Moving on to bold predictions, um, I'm going to drop a mic and say Red Bull to not finish in the points. Tom, your bold prediction, please. I know you just want that to happen. I think that's maybe a bit bold. Um, I am going to say... Law- uh, Liam Lawson to finish in the points. And I know that might sound like something, but that Alfa Tari is not not that good. And he's only in the third race. And he's qualified P10, so I think he can finish in the points. Well, I mean, when you also throw in the context of Alpha Tauri have had more drivers and they've had points finishes this season, you know, a, an Alpha Tauri finishing in the points in Singapore, no less, that's got to be quite bold. Jared, your bold prediction, please. <laughs> I think both of you guys kind of took what I was going to say. So I'm going to combine them, but then kind of up the ante and say, Neither Red Bull will finish the race, and we will see Lawson in the points. Wow. So that's get the a real mic that, drop, <laughs> mic drop right there. Wow. I thought I thought you were gonna say like double points for Alpha Tauri and no points for uh Red Bull, but <laughs> yeah, I think I think if Yuki managed to get past, you know, a non-penalized Red Bull, um and both Red Bulls were then to not finish in the points. That would be insane. Um, but yes, uh, at this point now as well, we'll give an opportunity to do a bit of promotion. So, Tom Downey, you are, um, as well as being a Grid Talk co-host, you uh, want another host of Formula Talk. Yes, I am. Um, I do that with Sophia. She's one of the pandas here on Grid Talk. Uh, we, it's a little bit more sporadic you know, because we sort of ebb and flow with the F2, F3 and F1 Academy seasons. Um, and obviously, you know, F F three is done, and F two only has one race left, which is not until Abu Dhabi. So, you know, there's a little while in, until until we have that. So we're on a we're on a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break at the moment. Um, yeah. So uh, Formula Talk, you can find that everywhere you find Grid Talk. Do you want me to do the Grid Talk plug? Nah, well, I'll do I'll do Grid Talk myself. Um... See, what I, see what I mean? <laughs> chat? I always get demoted. Always get demoted. Um, like maybe Max Verstappen might. Um, whilst we are waiting for some um breaking news potentially, Jawad, um, hit the apex, etc., etc. 
Yeah, um, so find it on all the good podcast platforms, your Apple, your Spotify, Amazon, and whatnot. I um, also write articles for a website called The Raw and do live blogs of the Grand Prix for them too, so check them out. And, um, yeah, if I can't plug the Grid Talk show, because that's your job, Ruby, I'll um, give a shout-out to Formula Talk as well because, yeah, Sophia and Tom do an excellent job, but as do all the lovely hosts and guests on the Grid Talk show. Too kind, Jared. Too kind. Um Yes, and if you want to hear anything more from me, you can find me on the socials at Rubes or Rubes001. Um, but yes, Grid Talk, as my job has been uh, delegated um, from you know the racing gods, uh, is available on YouTube where most episodes are recorded live, as well as Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, and Pocket Casts. Just search for Formula One Grid Talk uh, for our huge back catalogue of shows with previews and reactions to qualifying and the race results. Also, make sure you subscribe so you're first know when each new weekly episode is released. We'll be back tomorrow to review the race results of the Singapore Grand Prix um, and, you know, as to whether we will have a different race winner this season. Um, I guess we'll find out. Thank you very much for listening to the Grid Top podcast presented by Bet Online, and goodbye. We move into a post-show then. We are Recording still obviously... Stopped waiting on some breaking news but um you know right now there is of course in uh investigations going into alleged blocking and um, we've been asking you to leave some comments or questions in the live chat feel free to continue to do so um but i'm gonna start off with um you know going back to we were talking about how you deal with traffic in qualifying um and uh, Grid Talk co-host uh, Tom Horrocks, also from the monkey seat, um, in the comments there saying, qualifying, you shouldn't back up. As soon as you enter sector three, it should be a minimum sector time. Max was passed by seven or eight cars and still chose to drive that slow. It's driver error, um, which is agreed by Jared Bradley in the comments as well. I'm going to open this up to the floor. Does anybody have a response to that? Well, it wasn't just Max who went slowly because the thing that came out was... Uh... It said numerous or multiple cars um, be, you know, being investigated for it. So I, I do agree that drivers should you know, should not be backing up um, certainly that much uh, 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 around sector three. So I, I agree with Tom's point in that you know it's um, you know that it is drive it's driver error, but you know it, it's not it was it's not just Max. You know it's uh, you know we saw it was many many drivers today you know I, I didn't actually see how many but when we saw it on the tv feed it looked you know i would say it was probably what about six seven or so we saw that were there yeah and that was a mixture though of um cars on uh hot laps and uh warm-up laps as well Jawa, did you want to come in on this no nothing really more to add other than you know they should just come down hard on it so that we can stamp it out in the future yeah absolutely like that does i do think there needs to be something done um i was a you know i said during um qualifying that you know there should really have been some form of you know approach really there there is of course like an unwritten sporting rule of not being you know um slow um or you know in the way on your like you know outlaps and stuff like that but an unwritten sporting rule is not an actual you know directive it's not something you can enforce um exactly you know f1 does need to stop doing and do away with all of these gentlemen's agreements it's not very mm. 21st century for a start um well, but... look what happened with <laughs> oh, i was going to say look what happened when um san and prost made a yeah, exactly. gentleman's agreement and same with peroni and villeneuve Back in the day, they mean nothing really. Does, yeah, it, 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 sorry, Jared, call me. Yeah, no, it, you, that was that was it. I was going to say they mean nothing. So exactly, you know, I, I, I'm just just going to echo what what you said. A, ge a gentleman's agreement, as we call it, it stands absolutely nothing. You know, it, it just it it just means that you, know, you you get some people who don't want things happening a certain way because it. You know, because it doesn't, uh, you know, because they don't benefit from it, or you know, that you know, they're not gaining from it, um, and it's it's just like you know, you know, this this whole sort of you know like GA thing, you know, obviously acronym for gentleman's agreement. It's just like 
either put it in the sporting regs or leave it. You know, that you know, there's there's no you know, there's no way either way that you know that that you can effect not get get away with it, it's not the right phrase, but you know, there's no way that a a sort of like you know, a a, a rule between the drivers you know, that they've spoken about it can can sort of be made to stand, you know, and then it's like, you know, if someone breaks one of these, you know, these quote unquote gentlemen's agreements, what's the sanction? You know, do they have to pay the bill at dinner? Do they get a five place grid penalty? What is it? You know, so you know, it's just like you know, it's just it's just opening up a can of worms a bit. So, you know, either put it in the regs or leave it out. Yeah. You know, that that's why we have rules and regulations for things in the first place. Whilst um trying to find out if there's been any further action on um you know this certain uh well all of these impeding uh investigations nothing, i, I nothing, did see nothing yeah i'm yeah. i'm refreshing the fia website mm. i did see a rather funny social media post saying that that q2 is going to wreck red bull's catering budget um but uh in the comments below at the very least um even, even though they were in the budget cap this year so try again it's just a joke um yeah jared bradley <laughs> um I'm shocked with the inability of Red Bull to set up their cars. Absolutely gobsmacked. It did seem just, you know, they have been the team of just getting up and running every single race weekend. Um, you know, I said during the show, of course, like looking at that Red Bull at times, it looked like one of the worst cars on the grid. Um, did either of you two get that vibe? Um, you know, like, is there something for, is it, is it just, is it just a bogey circuit? You know, um, there was, of course, reference to the Mercedes when it was dominant, struggling at Singapore. Well, um, if you don't mind me going first, I oh, don't know if they uh, elaborated a lot on this during the Sky coverage, but was there talk of the fact that there was a technical directive this weekend on um, the rigidity of flaws and stuff and, you know, whether that might have affected it? the way the Red Bull set up or the Red Bull have had to run their car a bit lower this time, something like that. I mean, you know, Red Bull were known to have run, you know, flexible bits on their cars in, in years gone by and whatnot. So, you know, it's not the first time that technical directives have, you know, directly impacted a car's performance. But I also want to um, acknowledge that, yeah, you know, Singapore was one of the bogey tracks for Mercedes back in, you know, the early days of the hybrid era. And it was 2015, I remember, that I was shocked to see neither Mercedes qualify in the top three or finish on the podium in the race. So, you know, this could very much be you know, a case of that and then come Suzuka next week, it'll be uh, normal service resuming. So that's all I had to say on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Japan will be the, um, like the, the key moment really, you know, they did bring Red Bull did bring an upgraded floor to Singapore, but um, they did have to stop running. Well, I think they chose to stop running that after the technical directive. Um, So that ultimately wasn't really to, you know, tie into it, but go on, Tom. You were going to say something. Yeah, um, no, it, it's just you know, I, I think there's definitely some truth to this whole you know, like Mercedes comparison. I think Aaron made it in Slack when we were when we were chatting during um, uh, oh god, during um qualifying. So you know, I I think there's a some truth to that, but also, um, yeah, it's uh, it's. Yeah, you know, it's it's one bogey track, and I think to go from saying, you know, cause, you know, I think to go from you know they've been, you know, looking like you know the the best, you know, because you know, they've been the best car on the grid by country mile this whole season until this weekend, and um, to say that they look like the worst car on the grid, um, no, look at the Alfa Romeo for a start, that's worse, you know, that's uh, you know, that the, the, there are a few cars which fundamentally look worse. Just because Red Bull don't have every circuit sort of like ticked off, it's the same as you know Mercedes, you know, like Jarvis back in the day, you know, they're one bogey track, and it does seem to be that this um, uh, the that Singapore is that one, you know, it's a um, you know, it's it's such a sort of like unique setup round here that it's um that you know it, it's not you know it, it's not gonna. Not winning one race weekend, you know, however much you know, some people might want Red Bull to do the clean sweep, including me, because you know, because you know, you know, to have that kind of record would be absolutely insane. But 
it's not going to really cost them that much in the grand scheme of things because they've got the constructor sewn up, they've got the driver championship sewn up. So you know, they, you know, they can afford to take one foot off the gas, so to speak. And you know, if, if they don't win, you know, by thirty-five bajillion calendar years, that you know, t- tomorrow, well, you know, you know that you know that. Some people will be very happy to see Red Bull not win, you know, not least, you know, I'd imagine you two. And just like, you know, you know, it, it will be good to see someone else win, you know, and, and you know, a, a different team as well. And, you know, and like Jared said, next week, uh, or, you know, sorry, a week after, even in Japan, it'll be normal service, normal services resumed, you know. So I don't think they're going to lose too much sleep over it. Um, I think, I think most of the, um, most of the sort of like, uh, the sort of huffing and puffing, if you like, from Red Bull. I was going to use a different phrase. I'm, I'm not going to use that. Um, you know, most of the sort of like ill feeling and, and what have you from this uh, from from this weekend is going to happen in the debrief today. Or it's probably happened in the debrief today because today has set the tone for tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be. I never thought I'd say this about Red Bull. This year is going to be about damage limitation. Damage limitation tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we haven't had any breaking news whilst we've remained on air. Um, but, you know, I think it's a good opportunity now to wrap up. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, you two, for uh, joining me on air. Thank you, Aiden, as always, for doing a great job on the live production. And thank you to everyone who has tuned into the live stream. It was great to get some engagement going. Um, But yeah, we'll be back tomorrow to review a Singapore Grand Prix, which whose grid may still yet change. Um, But ultimately, you know, thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.